Hey guys, welcome back to another Redstone video. Today I want to talk about changes to moss farms since the introduction of the moss block over three months ago. A lot of the behavior of the moss block has changed and I want to keep you updated and show you a viable design for the current snapshot. A lot of those changes to the moss spreading behavior went under the radar because they weren't mentioned in the patch notes. So let's compare the moss block when it was first introduced to the latest snapshot. Okay, so here we get the first version. We got moss spreading. You could convert sand and gravel back then as well. And also, of course, smooth stone, uh, deep slate and dirt or grass. And if you yeah, would bone meal a moss block, it would always make a neat square. So in this case, we got a three by five, but uh, five by five or three by three or even seven by seven is also possible. And pretty much everything between. So now we got a seven by seven actually. Then another difference was that the moss block couldn't spread upwards. So if you would try to spread the moss a block higher, this wouldn't work, or a block lower, uh, yeah, this wasn't possible. Then we can also talk about another difference. You were not able to flush away those azalea bushes. So that's a block that contained the water. What has already been the case was the fact that you could get more bone meal out of the moss spreading behavior than you had to invest. So if you bone meal just a single moss block here, you can see the amount of moss blocks you are able to get. Additionally, you can also get moss carpet, seeds if you break the grass on top, and also the azalea can be composted. So if you put all the output into a composter, you get way more than the single bone meal you had to invest. So you could use this to make a bone wheel farm. That's what we also did about three months ago. All right, let's compare this with the current snapshot version. So one difference is that you can't convert sand and gravel anymore. Also the spreading pattern is completely different. So we don't get nice squares anymore. It's an irregular shape. The smallest area in previous snapshot that could be converted was a three by three area. But it seems now that this is no longer the case. You always get a couple more blocks. So in theory, you should get even more bone meal per bone meal invested. Another huge difference is that moss can spread downwards and one block upwards as well now. So this moss block is five blocks of the stone blocks here. As you can see, the stone gets converted into moss, but not at those two blocks because they got a block above. So here this moss also got converted. So you couldn't convert several layers um, at the same time. So you couldn't, for example, have another layer of stone here and another there, which will all get converted. You can only convert basically one layer. But at least you can have the spreader moss block somewhere else than exactly here in the middle. And it's also relevant for the moss farm. The azalea bush can now be flushed away by water. Change with the azalea bush was relevant because any block above the stone blocks here would prevent moss from spreading there. And it also doesn't get automatically removed in some cases. For example, the moss carpet here doesn't get removed if we push in another stone block. So in order to get rid of the moss carpet, we can flush water on top, which in previous versions, yeah, we had the issue that it wouldn't flush away uh, azalea bush, but it's no longer the case. So all the items that generate on top of the moss blocks can now be flushed to the side. And that makes it actually possible to make a stone generator that pushes in all the blocks from one side, because we also don't need the spreader block here in the middle of the whole thing anymore. It was important to never destroy that spreader block, but now we can just have it above and bone meal from there. There is one downside having the moss block this high. Um, the dispenser right next to it would also prevent another stone block being converted. So the efficiency is slightly lower compared to having the moss block here in the middle and the dispenser below. But overall, this is much easier. What we should also avoid is even more blocks being prevented from converting. And there's actually a limit at which you can have blocks again. So if you would add hoppers here, you can have hoppers at this height, but having them at this height, um, yeah, wouldn't work. So if we try this again real quick, then you can see those hoppers here would also prevent the spreading. So we can, can only have them this high, which adds another issue. We need to power the dispenser somehow. And that's not quite um, as simple. What we also need is another piston here above that punches out the moss carpet or grass blocks would generate above. Okay, so how do we power 
yeah, the dropper dispenser here. Um, we could replace another hopper here with a dropper. And then if you would power yeah, this block of redstone dust, then the dispenser below is also powered by quasi-connectivity. But since it doesn't receive an update, the dispenser actually doesn't trigger. And it's a bit tricky to get this dispenser to, yeah, to trigger. Um, if you would have a piston here that punches down, this would work. But already this piston here would also prevent the moss spreading. So yeah, what are we gonna do? The solution I came up with is using an observer that gets pulled out of the way. So if you trigger a dispenser, it has a four tick delay until it actually fires. So this gives us some leeway. The way we do this, we extend the sticky piston. This updates the observer, it would update the dispenser because it causes a block update yeah, right next to it here. And then we pull up the observer and after four ticks, uh, this would trigger while the observer is up here and it doesn't prevent the moss block being converted down there. So yeah, let's check it out. Just need to place a block here in front of the observer. And I need to put in some bone meal, of course. <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, only a single block wasn't converted. The one here with the dispenser above. So if you combine yeah, this little trick here with all the new moss behavior, you can make a bone meal farm that is relatively simple, at least compared to the first moss block based bone meal farms. So let's actually just turn it on. Here's the on switch. So we trigger yeah, the moss spreading first, then all the items get flushed over. We just open the trapdoors here, the waterlock trapdoors. And then the next step is creating more smooth stone. You have the smooth stone generator and just push it in. So we just have a smooth stone generator on one side. We don't need to worry about yeah, the moss block here in the middle because we got the one above. Then all the items are flushed to the side, land in the water stream, are put into the composters up the water item elevator and they would run over a hopper here. They would feed the dispenser again. Yeah, and all the bone meal that is left over after trying to fill up the dispenser again would land here in the storage chest on the side. And this little contraption that is also expandable would already produce 10 stacks of bone meal in one hour. When I designed the farm, I already had tileability in mind, so it's relatively easy to make this larger. Here we just got eight modules chained next to each other, and it's as simple as extending a redstone line and adding a repeater every 15 blocks. All right, we can turn it on here, and this way we get about 80 stacks of Bowman power, a bit over 5,000. And obviously we need a couple more composters here, to handle the yeah, quite larger amount of items we're getting. But apart from that, it's basically the same, just everything yeah, a bit longer. By the way, per bone meal spent here, bone milling the moss block, we get over three bone meal in return because we get that many moss blocks and moss carpet, azalea bushes and seeds from the grass. So this is really a good return rate. I think this is almost a bit overpowered. What makes this farm even better is the fact that it doesn't require a player being nearby. So other bone meal farms that are, for example, based on composting melons always require a player because the melon would only spread within the random tick range of a player. But since here everything is bone meal based, we don't require any random ticks. So we could build this in the spawn chunks go somewhere else in the world and it would still produce bone meal without us being nearby. You could also use a portal chunk loader to build this somewhere outside of the spawn chunks and have it loaded without a player being nearby. In case everything stays the same with the release of 1.17, this is definitely by far the best composting based bone meal farm you can make. It's way better than any other alternative. In case Mojang decides to nerf this, I hope they won't mess with the moss spreading behavior because this is actually quite nice. Maybe they could adjust the rates of the composters. At the moment, if you put the azalea bush or the moss block into the composter, you have a 65% chance to increase the composting level by one. Now, for example, the moss carpet has a 30% chance to increase it by one. Um, there's actually nothing that has a lower than 30% chance 
um, yeah, to increase the level by one. So in order to make this not OP, I think we would need like a 10% chance if you put in a moss block, um, so you wouldn't run a profit with such a very simple farm. But yeah, we have to see what Mojang does about this. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.